Okay, so we're going to try to keep this really quick. This is on thyroid nodules and cancer, and we could go into oncology and talk about it for a day and not even talk about 10% of it. So um, we're going to try to just stay to the basics of what you're going to need to know on step two and step three and leave, leave the rest to the endocrinologists and oncologists that you would be consulting with here. So... Uh, a thyroid nodule is an extremely common neoplasm of thyroid tissue. Remember, neoplasm does not equal cancer. It's just uh, a growth of cells. Uh, so the no thyroid nodules themselves are quite common. Approximately half of people will get a thyroid nodule at some point in their life. And the vast majority are benign and subclinical. Nevertheless, all patients who have where you've noticed a thyroid nodule, where you picked it up on physical exam, or where the patient has noticed it, you do have to get a TSH level. And that is the best first step. It's not imaging, it's not anything invasive, just a TSH level. So you check that TSH level, and patients with a normal TSH are going to be the ones who need further workup. Why do normal TSH need a further workup? The reason is because we would think that if a patient has a nodule, that it would be of thyroid tissue that's functioning. And if it's thyroid tissue that's functioning, then that's going to produce thyroid hormone and thus increase uh, inhibitory feedback and lower the TSH secretion from the anterior pituitary. It, when you have cancer, if you have a cancerous uh, if you have a cancerous nodule, then that's not going to be functional. So those are going to be patients that have normal TSH because their nodule is not functioning, just their regular thyroid. So nothing else is happening except the cancer. So patients with a normal TSH need further workup. And this is done with fine needle aspiration, and it's done under ultrasound guidance, so we make sure that we're getting that, uh, that needle into the right uh, nodule. If it's a patient that has multiple nodules, then you're just going to go into the biggest four. So what fine needle aspiration does is you're, you're just uh, uh, aspirating some of the contents of, uh, of the nodule and you're sending it off to pathology and they're going to analyze the cells and then they can tell you what essentially what the diagnosis is. Uh, ultrasounds will also help you determine whether or not the nodule is a cyst. So you should be able to tell on an ultrasound if there's no solid material in, in, the, in the nodule, then it's probably a cyst and you can give the patient some reassurance. Nevertheless, you're going to send what you aspirate off to pathology and they'll give you a categorical diagnosis. So the different kinds of thyroid carcinomas include papillary thyroid carcinoma, which takes up the majority, 60 to 70%, Follicular thyroid carcinoma, which is about 15%, anaplastic, which is 10%, and medullary, which is about 5%. So remember that the first step in assessing a thyroid nodule is to get a TSH. If you once you've got the TSH, if the TSH is normal, you're going to get a, uh, a fine needle aspiration. If it's uh, if the TSH is low, then it's likely a hyperfunctioning nodule. It's likely an adenoma. And in that case, it's fine. That can be left by itself as long as the patient doesn't have any symptoms of hyperthyroidism. However, on the USMLE, a lot of times you're going to get pictures. And those pictures may include the discovery of nodules by radioactive iodine uptake scans. And these are scans that we do in looking at thyroiditis and in, in determining different thyroid pathologies. This is not the best test to do for looking at a uh, nodule that we are investigating for cancer, but you may get a picture uh, of a radioactive uh, iodine uptake test and you'll need to know that nodules can be one of two types. So you can get 
a hyperfunctioning nodule, which I alluded to earlier. And that's a nodule of thyroid tissue that's actually functioning as thyroid tissue or even functioning at a higher level than the rest of the thyroid tissue. In that case, that's generally, actually, I would say that's never cancer. That's just a nodule of, of thyroid uh, tissue that's that's grown apart from the regular thyroid. That's not cancer. So a hyperfunctioning thyroid nodule is never cancer. If now if you have a non-functioning thyroid nodule, then that's a nodule with no activity. That can be cancer, but it's not always. Only 10% of non-functioning thyroid nodules are actually cancer. So most of those are benign too. If you get a non-functioning nodule on radioactive iodine uptake, then you should be treating that as thyroid cancer until proven otherwise. So what you should be doing is going ahead and getting a fine needle aspiration for cytology. We don't need to get a TSH because we know the TSH is going to be normal. When we're doing the TSH, all it is is sort of a backhand way of seeing is it a hyperfunctioning nodule, in which case the TSH will be low, or is it a non-functioning nodule, in which case the TSH will be normal. So if we do a radioactive iodine uptake scan, which like I said is not the first step if you have a patient with a nodule, but if you do have an uptake scan that shows a non-functioning nodule, then you're going to get a fine needle aspiration for cytology. So here's a picture of a radioactive iodine uptake scan and this is a normal thyroid. Thyroid. So you see a left lobe here, a right lobe here, and then the isthmus. And then here is a hyperfunctioning nodule. So you see here that this nodule has, is a, also known as a hot nodule because it's, it's hot in activity I guess you could say. Uh, but virtually these are never malignant. So these you just have to look after. Here's more. This is multiple nodules. So this would be uh, if this patient actually had uh, symptoms of hyperthyroidism, then this diagnosis would be toxic multinodular goiter. Toxic because they've got symptoms of of hyperthyroidism, multinodular because there's multiple nodules. Okay, and now here are some cold nodules. So here's one here, and here's another here. So you can see here that there's no activity going on here. So this would be something that we'd want to aspirate. Okay, so this is the thyroid nodule workup. Let's go over this one more time because this is important and the USMLE will throw questions at you about this. So the thyroid nodule, you find it, you get the TSH level. If the TSH level is low, then it's a, a functioning, probably a hot nodule. The patient likely has subclinical hyperthyroidism. If they start getting symptoms of hyperthyroidism, then you can uh, start treating them as necessary. But it's not cancer. If they've got a normal TSH level, then it's probably a cold nodule, and so you're going to get a fine needle aspiration of that nodule under ultrasound guidance, and you send the, uh, send the contents of that nodule out to cytology. Cytology will give you a diagnosis. You are not responsible for knowing what any of these uh, tumors or any of these things look like. So you just need to know what they are and what you do. So if it's non-diagnostic or unsatisfactory, you're going to repeat your fine needle aspiration one more time, and then if it comes back the same, then you just uh, keep a watchful eye on it. Atypia of undetermined significance is the same thing. You're going to repeat your FNA once, and then uh, if it comes back the same, then you, you uh, just keep a watchful eye on it. If it comes back as a follicular neoplasm, now what a follicular neoplasm is, is it's kind of uh, like a baby follicular cancer. So it's follicular cancer that, or it's follicular cancer that might become full-blown 
uh, follicular thyroid cancer. And so what you want to do is because the treatment for follicular thyroid cancer is a near total thyroidectomy, what you want to do if you get a quote unquote follicular neoplasm is you want to take that lobe out, just that lobe. So if it's on the left, you take the left lobe out. And then you get a pathology of that to see if it's invaded the thyroid capsule. If it's invaded the thyroid capsule, then you're going to uh, do more surgery. You'll take the rest out. Uh, but if it hasn't, then at least you spared that lobe. Now, if something is suspicious for malignancy, then you can do a surgical lobectomy or you can do a near total thyroidectomy. In any of these cases, I would err towards the side of caution and pick the more, uh, the more total uh, uh, surgery. And if it's flat out, they tell you it's malignancy, then you need to do a near total thyroidectomy. And there's one exception to this. Okay, so let's go over the four types of thyroid cancer. So papillary thyroid cancer uh, is the most common type of thyroid cancer. It spreads through the lymph nodes, and it's associated with a history of radiation exposure. The treatment is going to be a near-total thyroidectomy uh, with or without adjunctive radiotherapy, and with that, it has a good prognosis, particularly, particularly if it's caught early. Um, all the time when you do the thyroidectomy, you're always going to be sending the thyroid tissue off to pathology, uh, and they'll help you make sure that it's uh, that you got out all the cancer. For follicular thyroid carcinoma, this occurs more often in the elderly. What follicular thyroid carcinoma has unique to itself is that it can spread hematogenously. The follicular cells of the thyroid are responsible for making T3 and T4, so they're right next to the to the bloodstream. So this cancer can spread hematogenously. It's also associated with elevated levels of thyroglobulin. Because follicular thyroid carcinoma can spread hematogenously, we not only have to do a near total thyroidectomy, but we also have to do radioiodine ablation to make sure that we kill off any of the cancer cells in the blood. Anaplastic thyroid carcinoma, unfortunately, is very painful and it has a 100% mortality rate. So the treatment for this is just to manage the pain. Medullary thyroid carcinoma is, uh, can be sporadic or it can follow genetic patterns and familial syndromes, particularly multiple endocrine neoplasia type 2. And it's associated with elevated levels of calcitonin and serotonin. And with ser elevated serotonin, what you can get is flushing and diarrhea. So that's something to keep in mind when you're going over the patient's history. And the treatment for medullary thyroid carcinoma, uniquely compared to the other, uh, com compared to the other two that you would treat surgically, is going to actually be a total thyroidectomy. So if it's a medullary thyroid carcinoma, you're going to treat this as a total thyroidectomy. As a matter of fact, if you diagnose a patient with multiple endocrine neoplasia type 2, you're going to do a prophylactic thyroidectomy anyway because these patients have such a high risk of medullary thyroid carcinoma and so you, you want to uh, take them out of that risk because medullary carcinoma does have a, a, a significant mortality rate, although it is survivable. And that's it.